Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Today is December 29th, 2019. Please like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Only 3 days left. The 6 days after Christmas sale is in effect. Use the promo code FEDENARIAN and receive the pre-negotiated price for my subscribers. Invest in yourself and your family's well-being today. Also, go check out my link below to the new Carrot Bar program. Now is the time to get involved so I can help you to help yourself. It's free to join and you will be ahead and all set for post-RV investing. Get yourself set up today and be a part of Team Denarian. I encourage you, stay ahead of the rest, stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. First article of interest for today. U.S. military carries out defensive strikes in Iraq, Syria against Qatib Hezbollah. The U.S. military has carried out defensive strikes in Iraq and Syria against the Qatib Hezbollah militia group, the U.S. Pentagon said on Sunday, two days after a U.S. civilian contractor was killed in a rocket attack on an Iraqi military base. The Pentagon said it targeted three locations of the Iranian-backed Shiite Muslim militia group in Iraq and two in Syria. The locations included weapons storage facilities and command and control locations the group had used to plan and execute attacks on coalition forces. The United States had accused the group of the 30-plus rocket attack on Friday that killed the U.S. civilian contractor and injured four U.S. service members and two members of the Iraqi security forces near the oil-rich city of Kirkuk. In response to repeated Qatib Hezbollah attacks on Iraqi bases that host Operation Inherent Resolve, OIR, coalition forces, U.S. forces have conducted precision defensive strikes that will degrade its ability to conduct future attacks against OIR coalition forces, Chief Pentagon spokesman Jonathan Hoffman said in the statement. In Iraq, several Iraqi militia fighters were killed on Sunday in an airstrike on their headquarters near the western Qaim district on the border with Syria, military sources and militia commanders told Reuters. Earlier this month, U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo blamed Iranian-backed forces for a series of attacks on bases in Iraq and warned Iran that any attacks by Tehran or proxies that harmed Americans or allies would be answered with a decisive U.S. response. Next article of interest. Urgent. The death of the commander of the Hezbollah brigades in the American bombing of Al-Qaim. Urgent. The death of the commander of the Hezbollah brigades in the American bombing of Al-Qaim. Next article of interest. The first comment by the Iraqi government on the bombing of the Hezbollah brigades and came. The security media cell confirmed, on Sunday, that the headquarters of the 45th Brigade in the popular mobilization, was attacked. The cell said in a statement that, evening drones carried out missile attacks on the headquarters of the popular mobilization in Anbar Governorate, in the al Qaim district. She added, the bombing targeted the operations headquarters of the 45th Brigade of the Popular Mobilization and Training Headquarters and other headquarters in the district of al -Qaim. He pointed out that those attacks are not the first on the headquarters of the PMF in the district of al -Qaim in particular. And the authority announced the popular crowd, Sunday, 45 Brigade headquarters exposed to the bombing of a U.S. aircraft in the district of Western based al Anbar province. The authority said in a statement that, Sunday, American planes targeted the sites of the 45th Brigade in the popular mobilization, west of Anbar province. The statement added that, this evening, American planes bombed the sites of the 45th Brigade in the popular mobilization in the Mazra area in the Akashit Road, within the sector of Al Jazeera Al Badia district in the Al Qaim district, west of Al Anbar Governorate. He continued, the shelling resulted in martyrs and wounded ranks among the 45th Brigade of the Popular Mobilization, indicating that the shelling was still going on. On Sunday, the U.S. Department of Defense announced that it had launched raids against five Hezbollah battalions in Iraq and Syria, in response to the killing of an American, after an attack on the K-1 base in Kirkuk Governorate two days ago. In response to repeated attacks by Hezbollah brigades on Iraqi bases hosting the Special Coalition Forces, 
U.S. forces have launched precision defensive strikes against five of its facilities in Iraq and Syria that will weaken its ability to carry out future attacks against coalition forces, the ministry said in a statement. The statement added that the five targets include three battalion sites in Iraq and two in Syria, adding that these sites included weapons storage facilities and command and control sites used by Hezbollah to plan and carry out attacks on coalition forces. He continued, the recent strikes of Hezbollah included a missile attack with more than 30 rockets on an Iraqi base near Kirkuk, killing one American citizen and wounding four members of the American service and two members of the Iraqi security forces. The United States and its coalition partners fully respect Iraqi sovereignty and support a strong and independent Iraq, however, the United States will not be impeded from exercising its right to self-defense. The statement said. The ministry stressed that Iran must stop its attacks on the United States and coalition forces and respect the sovereignty of Iraq to prevent any further defensive actions by U.S. forces. Next article of interest. Economist. Iraq's losses from trade exchange as a result of the demonstrations amount to $3 million per month. Economic expert Saleh al Hamosh asserted on Sunday that Iraqi trade exchange losses are estimated at $3 million per month as a result of the demonstrations, indicating that the Iraqi monthly exchange rate in normal times is estimated at $270 million. Al-Hamash said that Iraq has a monthly turnover in trade from ports, taxes, etc., estimated at $270 million. He added that the protests in all countries of the world are harmful to the economies of the countries, noting that the Iraqi ports stopped days, trucks and delivery methods did not reach the time specified for them. He explained that the damage resulted in Iraq losing an estimated 10% of the volume of its monthly commercial exchange, which is equivalent to $3 million a month pointing out that its solution lies in the dimensions of demonstrations from vital economic places. Next article of interest. Conscious slash including al-Assadi and al-Saudi. 170 deputies confirmed their adoption of five candidates for prime minister. On Sunday, the deputy in the House of Representatives, Qasem al-Shamari, affirmed that the assembly had adopted five names for the position of prime minister including Abdul Ghani al-Assadi and Abdul Wahab al-Saudi. Al-Shamari said to the media news agency slash Ayana, reporter that the assembly consists of deputies in different blocks, but they do not represent their political components, but rather embrace the demands of the protesters, noting that the political forces need our gathering, and we represent a majority within parliament. He explained. The Assembly is open to everyone who shares a vision with it, revealing that the Assembly adopts the five names that have been raised in the demonstration squares, which include Rahim al-Akili, Sinan al-Shabibi, Muhammad al-Awi, Abdul Ghani al-Asadi and Abdul Wahab al-Saudi in addition to supporting Muhammad al-Awi in a way larger. Next article of interest. Conscious legal. Parliamentary oversight of the caretaker government has ended. On Sunday. Legal expert Ali al-Tamimi said that the parliamentary oversight of the caretaker government has ended, and that the responsibility for oversight rests with the administrative judiciary. Al-Tamimi commented in a publication published by an reporter, Iraqi media news agency slash Ayana, that oversight of the caretaker government that resigned is from the administrative judiciary in its administrative decisions, because political oversight over them, that is, the parliamentarian ended in resignation, and therefore for the parliament's control over it in Article 61 does not apply to it a constitution in terms of oversight. She added, as for the criminal responsibility in which the caretaker government is located, such as contracts or crimes, oversight will be over it. Be the department of the public prosecutor in each ministry. The prosecutor can, according to his Law 49 of 2017, refer these files to the Integrity Investigation Court. Next article of interest. Al-Bakhadi. Mr. Amar al-Hakim is in contact with the President of the Republic to resolve the Prime Minister's crisis. The representative of the Parliamentary Bloc of Parliament, 
Jassim al-Bukhadi, revealed contacts made by the head of the National Wisdom Stream, Mr. Amar al-Hakim, with President of the Republic Barim Saleh to resolve the current crisis in the nomination of the candidate for Prime Minister. In a press statement, al-Bukhadi predicted, a breakthrough will take place in the current political crisis during the current week, noting that, efforts are being made by the, rational people, towards the return of the President of the Republic to Baghdad by reducing the tension between him and some political blocs. He added, Mr. Amar al-Hakim started moves that included making contacts with the President and the owners of the mind, in order to resolve the crisis of the Prime Minister and reach the choice of everyone. Next article of interest. The protesters are waiving escalatory measures and threatening to storm the green zone in Baghdad. The coordination of the demonstrations confirmed that, if the political blocs insist on choosing a prime minister who does not fit the demands of the people, they will take escalatory measures. Demonstrations came out from Darir Square, towards the Karada and Jadria regions, which include several party headquarters in the latest developments in the demonstrations in Baghdad and the southern governorates of Iraq. Hundreds of protesters in Karbala also held sit-ins in the education square in the city center, while in Dekar governorate, protesters continued to cordon off the Dekar oil company and demanded that appointments be made to the people of the province. Activists have threatened to take new escalatory steps if the power parties insisted on nominating what they described as corrupt and partisan personalities, while stressing that all steps of peaceful escalation are on the table, including the sit and in front of the political decision making headquarters. The writer and activist Ali Riyadh described the marches that went to the headquarters of the parties as a small message that is like a pinch of the ear, noting that the protesters have many options and in their hands do everything if the power continues to persist. He continued, the escalation is related to the next steps of the authority. If they return to nominate corrupt, partisan or different personalities, there will be a major escalation, but its form will be determined by time. All options for peaceful protest are on the table, he added. All the streets and squares of Iraq are a protest and sit in option for us including the celebration yard and the front yards of the Peace Palace and Parliament building. While the protesters confirmed their rejection of the nominations of political parties, they indicated that the option of storming the Green Zone is still on the table, warning that the political blocs insist on their positions, which could lead to obstruction and whistling the political equation. For his part, activist Tamar al rubayi said, the mouthpiece of the marches that went to the headquarters of the parties. Be with the people and do not bet on the patience of his youth and do not force the youth to extremist options. On the intention of the protesters to storm the green zone, al rubayi confirmed that the option to storm the green is still strongly present in the protest arenas, hoping that the authorities will think logically and inject blood before reaching the real blockage and the zero equation. For his part, activist Yasser Nazim said, the green zone is, in the end, in Iraqi land and can be in the hands of the protesters as a stronger pressure card. The most important remaining demands are early elections, holding the killers accountable and speeding up the selection of an unbiased prime minister who fits the protesters' standards, he added. For his part, activist Tala Almania saw that the sit in squares is the pressing force and we will not be satisfied with a prime minister who does not fit our conditions, while committing him to specific and necessary tasks, the most important of which is holding accountable the killers and kidnappers of the demonstrators, while providing a comfortable environment for holding early parliamentary elections, setting a temporary period to run the country and implement the program that we will be launching during this period. He explained, all peaceful options are on the table in the event that the political forces do not comply with the legitimate and popular will. Like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to find me on Facebook and Twitter, so you don't miss a beat. Take advantage of the six days after Christmas sale, today. Use the promo code THEDENARIAN for the additional discount on the already discounted price. Time is running out. Sign up for the Carrot Bar program today so you will be all set post-RV.
and it will be one less thing you will have to worry about. You definitely want to get on board with this program. It will benefit you in the long run and it's free to join. Did you ever hear the term, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink? The links are in the description below. Get involved, stay informed and stay alert. Knowledge is power. And know that today we are one day closer than yesterday. Over and out for now, the Denarian.